as we continue to discuss praising God for His Word. And we talk about the concept of doing this through prayer. We see the example of David in Psalm 119 and verse 169, where he prayed to God, expressing a desire for understanding according to His Word. When we pray, we are not going to receive understanding from God that is contrary to His Word, and we should not be seeking after such. Now, Mormons will often tell people to pray to God for the knowledge that the Book of Mormon is right. Now, while the Scriptures tell us to pray for wisdom in James 1.5, we do not pray for knowledge. To gain knowledge of the will of God, we must study the Word of God. When David prayed for deliverance, he prayed that it would be done according to God's Word. Psalm 119, verse 170. And as we make requests of God in prayer, it is His will that will be done in all things. Our prayers, no matter how fervently they may be offered, will not cause God to act in a way that is contrary to His will or prevent Him from carrying out His plan. As Job said to God, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Job 42 and verse 1. But also another way that we can praise God for His Word is to sing songs about His Word. In our worship, we're taught in Ephesians 5.19 that we are to sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Now some of these songs should be about the Word of God. Now there are several such songs that we commonly sing, such as Give Me the Bible or Wonderful, Wonderful Words of Life. Singing is helpful because it is instructive according to Colossians 3.16. We can teach God's Word through song. And while this can obviously be done through the spoken word, singing is helpful because the tune, the melody, helps us to remember the truths that are contained in the songs that we sing. But also, we should desire salvation so that we can continue to praise God. Like David, we will long for salvation as we read in verse 174. We recognize the great blessing of heaven where God will wipe away every tear from our eyes and there will no longer be any death, nor will there be any mourning or crying or pain, Revelation 21.4. But we also understand the horrors of hell as it is described as the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, Revelation 21.8. But like David, we should have a desire for life, that is, eternal life, and to an extent, even our temporal lives here on this earth. We often want to prolong our lives here, not because we fear death, as so many unbelievers do, but because we want to continue to enjoy the blessings that God has given to us in this life. We should ask ourselves why it is that we want to be saved or to have life, either long life here or, more importantly, eternal life in heaven. While we may enjoy the rich blessings that God has bestowed upon us in this life, our desire ought to really be to praise God as long as we live on the earth. Let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that give thanks to His name, Hebrews 13.5. And as we look past this life, our desire to get to heaven should be that we can continue to praise God among the great multitude which no one could count. From every nation, all tribes and peoples and tongues, who are there, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, Revelation 7 and verse 9. But ultimately, we should be serving God in order to praise and honor Him, rather than for our own personal benefit. Now yes, there is obviously a benefit to us for faithful service to God, but part of being one of his followers is that we surrender ourselves for him and that we do everything out of love for him. Friends, we pray that you will consider these things that we've discussed about the word of God and that you will praise God for his wonderful word. We thank you for joining us for our program today and we pray that God will bless you with a wonderful day.